Hey gang, and welcome back to our Kauai bathroom remodel. In our last video, you saw us rip out that old deck tub, all the tile and the framing around it, all the old plumbing, and it's looking fantastic. Today, we're out here at Shipwrecks Beach. In fact, that cliff over there, Jordan and his brothers jumped off of it just a little while ago. Awesome job, bud. Yeah. I didn't think y'all could do it. So we like to hang out at the beach a little bit in the morning, kind of get our vibes going for the day, and then head back to work. So our tools are waiting. The bathroom's waiting. Let's head back over there and keep on keeping on. All right, team, we're back here at the job site and our next steps are to set this pan from Schluter, put our backer board on our floor and our walls, put up our drywall, start waterproofing everything to get ready for tile. But this is a remodel, so this pan has kind of an odd shape coming out of the door. We got this little recess or this lip right here we want to accommodate. So we're going to modify that foam pan Let's grab a utility knife and our multi-tool, modify that pan, and get to work. Okay, team, we're all ready to go to cut our pre-manufactured sloped pan. All my references were from the center of the drain. You can see if I got it all marked up. Here's my entrance right here. I'm just gonna cut it with a utility knife. We had to create a little rabbit in our Schluter pan to go over that plywood lip. You'll see more how that works when we put it in. We got one more to do on the other side for the entrance to the shower where we're transitioning to that sloped deck. And as you can see, I even got it marked at a slope. Let me spin this over, cut that one. We'll give this a test fit. All right, here's the bottom of our pan ready for a test fit. You can see how nice this rabbit came out and this one. So what we're gonna do those rabbits cover this area right here where the plywood's taller and also right here at the entrance to the shower. Now, yes, the foam is thinner there. But look at this. We're going to put thin set here to strengthen that joint. But also by the time we put backer board and tile here, it's going to be fine because you're never going to be putting any weight right here on probably the weakest part of the pan. So let me grab it. We're going to do a test fit. I measured 40 times. Cut once. Hopefully we're good to go. Lower it in place. I'm liking it. I'm liking it. Oh, nice. Check that out, gang. We are almost ready for a shower. Now we're going to use an unmodified thin set to put this down and we're actually ready for that step. But what I think we should do, Jordan, we should cut our backer board for the floor, mix up enough thin set to put this down and our entire floor system. Do it all in one fell swoop. You ready? Yeah, let's go. All right, let's go downstairs, cut the backer board, mix some thin set. Who's the measurer, huh? You the huh? measurer. Who's the measurer? Good job. You the measurer. All right, all three pieces of our backer board are cut. And as you can see, we got a seam in the plywood right here. I didn't want my seam in the backer board over that one. So we overlapped it just like that. Get this guy down, and there we go. Now you'll also notice we used half inch backer board. Typically, I would use quarter inch backer board on the floors, save the half inch for the walls. But under this tile is half inch backer board. So we did the same thing here. So our tile floor in the bathroom would flush out with the tile in the existing part of the house. So Rad's going downstairs. We've got some unmodified thin set we're gonna mix up. We're gonna put the pan down. We're gonna put it under the backer board, screw all the backer board down, and then we're almost ready for tile on the floors. Let's head downstairs, see what Rad's doing. All right, guys, we're ready to mix up our unmodified thin set. Now we're working with some Schluter products. They have their all set that they use. But really the specification is unmodified. It meets ANSI schedule A118.1. So we picked this up locally, can't get the Schluter all set here. And it's key that you use this particular type of mortar. We've actually gotten emails from people that used modified thin set behind the curdy and it never dried properly. They come back the next day and they can rip it off like wallpaper. So important to use the right product. I think we're ready with our paddle and our water. Let's start adding some thin set and getting this done. So uh, it's important to note that we don't have a measuring cup. We don't. So we're kind of eyeballing the mixture here, but you know what? I would consider us pros at this point. So I think we're gonna get it to a nice consistency. Yeah, on the last tile job, we had our little beaker and our scale, right. but you guys by the end, you were pros. So yeah. I'm gonna let you do it. Let's do it.
this is cool. But I did not think the next bathroom I was going to be thin setting would be in Kauai. I thought it was going to be your garage back in Houston, man. Yeah, it's cool though. We can't complain. Not at all. How's that consistency, that eyeball consistency? It's okay. No, I'm kidding. It's perfect. <laughs> Loving it. Using a quarter by three eighths notch trowel. That's what's recommended for that pan. Pretty boy. Let's do it, man. Oh, it's hung up on a screw. There's always one screw left. That's it. <laughs> nice. Mm, very solid. Loving it. All right, let's screw this down. And I think we are done for the day. All right, gang, next day here at the bathroom job site, we got all the backer board down on the floor as we did yesterday. And today we're going to start doing the walls because that's had time to dry. So now we can walk on this. The first thing that we want to do today, we got this glass block. There's a ton of mortar, grout, whatever they used in between this joint right here. And that's good that they did that, but we need it out of our way because when we slide our new backer up against it, we need to have a good seal. We've got some Lexel or the Kauai version of Lexel. We're going to put a big, nice bead on the edge of this glass block and then slide our backer into it, create a nice seal that's waterproof and flexible because this is open to the elements outside. But we need to get all this mortar out of the way. I just got like a beater chisel and a hammer. And this glass block is uh, pretty strong, so I'm not worried about breaking it. And we're just going to go ahead and chisel this stuff away. In the meantime, Dad's going to be cutting blocking for grab bars and stuff like that, cutting the backer so when we're done with this, we can just install it. So let's get this done. All right, gang, that's what we're looking for right there. Just a nice, cleaner edge for our leg sale. Nice. What's going on in here? Y'all working? Hey, what's up, playing? man? What you got? Here's your blocking platter, sir. Oh, right on. Use all the scraps of plywood and two by. We put blocking here and here for our grab bar. Just like this one, we're gonna have a vertical grab bar here. Horizontal one here. But look, I'm still on my board shorts from the beach this morning. Should I go change or can I just work in this? Oh, those are the vibes, man. You're good. All right. Yeah, that's approved. <laughs> Let's go. blocking is done this one right here is for a vertical grab bar as you enter and exit the shower so that's gonna be great had to put a little one here to pick up the edge of this piece of backer board down here at the bottom kind of forgot this one there's always one more right so we had one here in the corner to pick up this sheet so we're good here we're good here working our way back to the other corner put a blocking here again pick up the edge of that sheet got one here doing the same thing and these two guys that's for a horizontal grab bar right here. Didn't have any wide two by material, so we just doubled up some plywood. It's gonna work great. Of course, took a picture of that, so we know where to put the grab bar. We also took a picture of this one with a tape measure coming off of the block, so we can locate it once it's all tiled. Now let's go on down here to our pan. Our thin set from yesterday is all dried, and this is nice and solid. But we have this little area here, and a smaller one over on the other side. And typically we would fill that in with deck mud, dry pack, something like that, and then waterproof over it. We can't get that material here on the island. Best I could come up with is just stack two pieces of half inch backer board. This is one and an eighth inch thick. So I think by the time you add the thin set, it's gonna flush out right here. We're gonna go heavy on this side to get a little bit of a slope. And then I actually brought a big piece of curdy with me. Well, Rad brought it on the airplane. We're gonna wrap it and waterproof this come up the wall here and there so our pan is completely waterproofed. Got our thin set ready to go. So I'm gonna let Jordan Rad tackle this one. These two little pieces are for over here. I got everything pre-cut. Here's my two pieces for this side. I'm gonna let them get in here, install those. And so while Jordan and Rad are working on the backer board, try to finish this shower pan, I'm gonna be right around the corner doing something pretty crazy that I don't think we've ever tried before. We've got the vanity that goes here. It's the only place it can go in the bathroom. And remember, it's 18 and a half inches deep. It sticks out into this doorway. And we can't have that because we don't want people banging their leg on it as they come in and out of the door. We want to push it as far that way into the wall as possible. 
and we got all this in the way. We got hot, cold, we got a drain and a vent and all this framing, and there's the refrigerator. We're gonna have to patch that too. So while they're working in the shower, I'm gonna remove this piece of sheetrock, see what I'm up against, and see if it's even possible to push the vanity back as far as we want. Make sure you hang on for that. Let's grab our tools and get to work. All right, gang, the drywall is removed, and look at this. We got everything in our way. We got plumbing in the way, both the water supply and the drain and the vent. Got electrical in our way and all the framing in our way. Here's what I would like to do. This space right here is just a little bit wider than the top of the vanity. The top is the widest part. I want to slide the top back into this wall which means I have to cut the back of the vanity, the back of the cabinet out. The vanity actually comes with a space in the back, four and a half inches for plumbing. For example, if it comes up from the floor, so they designed the vanity to have room for the plumbing in the back, which is gonna help us out. So my plan is to remove this blocking. We got the half inch copper water hammers here. I'm gonna cut those off and lower them as much as I can on this side. I bought an air admittance valve. I'm gonna show you what that's all about. Not my favorite, but it's the only solution we have here to take care of this vent. On the top of the vent, this goes through the roof. We'll cut that off, put a cap, so rainwater doesn't come in there, and we'll get on the roof later and cap that. That leaves me with the electrical and the framing. So I gotta move the electrical. But look at all the wire I got, so that's a good thing. So we're gonna come over here, remove this drywall. It looks like my cables come out of the bottom of the box. I'm gonna remove the drywall and come out of the top of the box, which is gonna give me more wire, come through this corner stud and route all my wires up here. So by the time I do that, the plumbing, both the water supplies and the drain and the vent should be taken care of. And now we got the electrical taken care of. My next step is just to chop off this framing. This is not a load bearing wall. If you can look through here real quick, see how this place is built. We've already scoped out where all the posts are. And this is just a partition wall. So I feel very good about removing these studs. We'll have a sill plate here, one at the top. We're basically creating a big niche right here, right, Jordan? Yeah. And the, the top of our vanity is going to slide into that niche, and our cabinet base we're going to have to modify. It's going to go back, and everything should flush out about right here. It's going to look epic. This light is not in the center, so we're going to take advantage of what we're doing now center that light. We may even flip it over, put it on top of this block so it's a little higher. And uh, this is remodeling at its finest. I got my work cut out for me. I'm gonna start on this. Rad's already bringing up the backer board from downstairs. And Jordan and Rad are gonna start putting backer board in the, uh, in the shower. Let me hop in there real quick. This came out great. Got a nice flush, flushed out here. Nice slope to it, I can feel that. And again, brought some curdy with us. We're gonna go over that and up the wall. It's gonna work out great. Now come over here to this corner. Remember this pocket that's built into the kitchen for the uh, refrigerator door handle? So the refrigerator door opens all the way. We're gonna keep that, but there's nowhere to put screws for our back of board. So we're gonna use adhesive. We're gonna put this sheet up first, screw it where we can, and this sheet is gonna die into it and help hold it. It's gonna work out just fine. All right, bud, I'm tired of talking. Yep. Ready to start working. Oh, a nice little three and a half minute segment. Good Thanks, job. yep, let's, uh, let's grab my tools and uh, I'll start working on this. Y'all do backer board, and let's come back in an hour, see where we are. All right. All right. Look at this, gang. I'm standing in our shower. It is Monday, and we demoed this thing last Thursday. Epic progress for the stud pack team. Let me walk you through what we've done so far. In the shower, it is almost ready for waterproofing. We've got a three foot piece of backer board here. The seam worked out perfectly for our ledge. Don't know how that happened, but sometimes it happens, right? Second full sheet here, still deciding what we're gonna do here, drywall or backer board. And what we did at this class block, we pushed the backer board as tight as we could. We got some Lexel and embedded it so it's nice and waterproof there. Even though the shower head's over there, that'll never see any water, we wanted to seal it up the best we could. So just a couple more pieces of backboard here on the end, here on the top. We thought it would be cool if we could angle the tile in the corner, just like this is angled, but we really don't have the tools for that. But who knows, maybe we'll figure something out. Now let me come out here and I'll update you on the impossible vanity install. So this is what it looks like now. We pulled down the drywall, 
I cut out the section of vent. I looked up this pipe to see if I could see sky, the beautiful Hawaii sky, but I didn't. So we just put a cap on it. What I think this one and a half probably does, it goes up, turns left, and ties into the two inch main vent over there for the shower, because that's the only vent on the roof. I can't really see it up here because it's full of blocking. So I'm happy with the way that came out. Remember, we're gonna put an air admittance valve right here. Let me grab that and just show you what that is right now. This is an air admittance valve. It comes with this ABS fitting. You can glue it onto two inch or the inner diameter inch and a half, something like that. But let me show you how it works. Pretty cool. So I'll be able to suck air in, but I can't blow air out. Watch. <laughs> See that? And that's how the sewer gases are gonna work. It can pull air in if it needs it when it's draining, just like when you put your finger on a straw over a glass, pull your finger, water drains, same thing here. But sewer gases cannot come out and stink up your house. So we're gonna mount this here as high as we can. We're gonna wait for the vanity to arrive tomorrow before we do that. So the vent is basically out of our way. Then I started on the electrical. Now let me walk you through the electrical side. First thing I did, I removed the drywall from here to here so I could access this stud bay. Then I pulled the existing switch leg. Switch leg feeds the light, vanity light over the sink right here. That box actually was on the bottom. I flipped it on top to make the light a little higher over the sink. And then I put it in the center because it wasn't in the center before. That kind of stuff drives me crazy. Once I had this one free, the switch leg, I had this cable to deal with. That's 120 volts to the box. So I simply rerouted both of them way up high. Drilled new holes in the stud here and here. Over here in the corner, this is like a four stud corner. I couldn't drill through it. I couldn't even get a drill in here and here. So I just hogged it out with a big paddle bit or spade bit. And to cover that up, we'll just put a nail plate there and there, it'll be fine. Now come over here, Jordan, and let me, and let me show everybody this. Remember we talked about how these are just partition walls? Look at this. We just have a single two by four as a header for this door. And that confirms to me that this is just a partition wall because if it was a load bearing wall, this would actually be a header, right? We all know what a header is. It'd be a four by four, four by six, something like that. So feeling really good about what we did to the framing to modify it, to get that vanity in this wall. And so one of our goals in a remodel is always to be better and stronger than it was when we got here. And this is a good example right here. We have a four inch square plastic junction box and these devices won't mount here. So they were mounted to a mud ring and I've never seen one like this before. Of course I broke it because it's baked like plastic. Look at that. Look how brittle that is. So that's trash now, but no problem. We picked up a new two gang metal mud ring at the hardware store and we got a new ground fault and a new single pole switch and a new cover plate. So it's all gonna look awesome. Now this circuit's been off for a while. I'm not sure what else is on it. The refrigerator's on. At least we got cold food and cold water, but I feel like I wanna finish the electrical, get the power back on. So I'm gonna work on that. And then we're gonna start waterproofing this shower. Let's do it. <laughs> what? Okay. Were you gonna say something? No. Okay. <laughs> all right, got all the electrical done. Came out great. We replaced the mud ring right here. And I went ahead and put electrical tape around there because uh, the ground fault was on a separate circuit than this. I knew that, but it did kind of uh, give me a little bit of a reminder that it was still on. So now it's nice and safe. All right, in the shower, it is ready for waterproofing. Our last step before we finally tile this thing. Couldn't be any simpler. You've seen us do it a bunch before. We're gonna put mesh tape here, then set all the seams, the outside corners, all the inside corners. We're gonna come down here and put curdy band between the pan and the walls a larger piece of curdy between here and the wall where you had to fill in. Then we're gonna set our drain. Let's head downstairs, get the thin set, get our tools, get the waterproofing done. All right guys, we're working on our inside corners. These are critical, right? This is where all the water gets in under your tile seeps through, causes all the problems in the future. So we've got a piece of curdy right here, up the wall two inches, out over our patch. Remember the patch we did just like this one? We have a piece of curdy band right here. Now I've got the pre-made corner. I am ready to put this one in, just like that. Really liking the way this is turning out. Love these corners. Smooth it all out. Man, this one's laying down nice, Jordan. Yeah. Gotta be careful the direction you're pulling your knife because you'll pull that 
mesh tape out, but finally got this one. A little more thin set in the corner. But it's kind of a balance, right, Jordan? You don't want to put too much thin set in your corners because what's going to happen? Well, if you put too much thin set in your corners, you're just adding a buildup that you're going to have to tile over eventually. We've experienced that in a lot of tile jobs where yep. we just went heavy with the thin set, heavy with the waterproofing because we thought we were doing a good job, which we were, but then you go to tile it and your bottom is kicking out so far. Right. And when you've got a perfect tile job and you get to that bottom piece and it kicks, and out. It kicks out and messes it all up. It destroys your like yeah. your piece of art. Right. Exactly. <laughs> but I'm liking the way that looks. That looks really good. Let me do this other side. I'll do the wall behind me with the band. Then I think I'll do the drain and I'll work my way out of here. Perfect. All right, gang, we are waterproofing our way out of the shower. So my next step is going to be the drain and then I'll do the threshold right here. So I got to cut this pipe off. I'm going to do it with the multi-tool. I got a blade on here, obviously. I'm going to cut it as low as I can. And I got a special tool because we have to cut it even lower. Let's cut this pipe off. Got a rag in this inch and a half pipe. I feel like I'm stuffing an old musket rifle. We go pretty deep. And the reason we put the rag in there, because sometimes, don't ask me how I know, this chuck will loosen, this drops in your pipe, and now you're fishing for your special tool. Now check this out. This is a two inch fitting, and we got an inch and a half drain. It was existing. We could have increased the size of this pipe, but we're already tight already. If I would have increased it to two inch, I don't think we would have ever gotten this in there. So I've got a two by inch and a half bushing already glued in there. And that's gonna slip right over the pipe. But you can see we're way too high. I gotta cut this down, and that's what this internal pipe cutter's for. I'm gonna get inside, turn the drill on, rotate, and it's gonna cut with this little blade from the inside out. Now how do I know how much to cut off? From the bottom of the flange to the bottom of the bushing is four inches. This pipe is gonna go inside the bushing three quarters of an inch. Four minus three quarter is three and one quarter. And that's the distance I have from the edge of my chuck to the blade. So all I gotta do, all I gotta do is kinda eyeball the bottom of the chuck with the top of the foam and work my way around. Really don't know any other way to do it. We've done a bunch of these and it's always worked in the past. Let me get down in there. We'll cut this pipe, set our drain, and finish the waterproofing. All right, there we go. It's a little rough. But it's going to be fine because remember we have three quarters of an inch of material to glue with. I'm going to get this rag out of here. How many suppliers, guys? Yeah. Oh, I got it. There she goes. Clean this off. I'm going to give it a little test fit. Line it up. Man, it's tough. So I put some thin set here on top of the white foam. It's going to bond this plastic flange down ooze up through here and we'll smooth it all out. So I've got the thin set down there already. Now I've got my ABF cement, glue everything up. And this is always the part that stresses me out because we have no access from the bottom. Well, I guess we do, right? It's a bedroom. We can cut a hole in your bedroom ceiling, right? Totally. And we even have a special tool to get the drain in here. Check this out. There we go. A little more, a little more. There we go. Nice. 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 All right, can remove the special tool. All right, let's put that collar on there, and then all we got left is this little corner. Uh, Paul, I think we broke the special tool. All right, uh, that can become the garage broom, and we'll buy you. We'll buy your dad a new one. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm putting a notch on this uh, thin set. Got to use a special size notch for the curtain. It's not really that special. But the trowel I got at the Schluter workshop, and it's simply a 1 8 by 1 8 square notch trowel. Yeah, this is like one of those Japanese Zen gardens, right? With all the, the circles in the, uh, sand. the sand and the stone. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Put her down. Sweet. Putting in the drain is like the most anxious part, and putting this in is like my favorite part. So you need to clean this part out right here, because the drain sits in there. You don't want any thin set hindering you when you push that drain down. You want to go down even with the tile. You don't want anything in your way or the drain's going to be higher than the tile. All right, I'm really liking that. I can smell supper. Let me move my station over here. We'll do this corner. We're out of here. 
It is the next day on our bathroom remodel here on the beautiful island of Kauai. And as you can see, we've already been, well, kind of hard at work this morning. Putting up bread guard is really just as simple as painting, right? But we like to put it over backer board as a belt and suspenders approach to keeping water out of our structure and from leaking downstairs. We could tile directly over the backer board, but like I said, it's cheap insurance and we like doing it and it goes really fast. So our next step, believe it or not, is to start tiling. We actually counted all our tile. If we go six courses high, I would need 47. We have 70. So this is gonna look really cool. We're gonna go all the way here. We're gonna do this whole wall with tile and this whole wall with tile up to about here. It's gonna look killer, I think. Can't wait to see how that's gonna look. So Rad and Summer just got back from running the tile saw. We're gonna set it up outside on the balcony. How cool is that gonna be, Jordan? Cutting tile outside in Hawaii. Can't wait. And uh, we're gonna mix up some thin set and get this thing tiled. All right, gang, a little change of plans. As soon as we got the tile saw set up on the balcony, the vanity showed up. And I wanted to get a jump start on the vanity because over here, I need the drywall up so this tile can come over and hide this seam between the backer board and the drywall. So we've already put the air admittance valve in and we've already lowered the hot air chamber. This is my cut line that I need to cut this framing right here so the vanity top can slide back into the wall. Here's my cut line at the top, I already got those established. So as soon as I solder this cap on, we can cut this framing out of the way, frame in kind of a big niche and then we'll put the vanity in here again for a test fit. Let's get going. Use my uh, reciprocating saw, cut through this 2x4 here, cut through the 2x4 there, remove this one, rinse and repeat three times, and we're ready to put this thing back together. This is remodeling, baby. Sometimes you gotta take a few steps backwards to move forward. Now I'm standing in the kitchen. Here's the niche for the handle on the refrigerator door. And here's our niche for the refrigerator, all separated by half an inch of drywall. Pretty tight. So I've done this before, trying to take out a portion of a stud on a three corner stud. And it's a pain. It's really a four corner stud, right? We've got one, two, one on the other side, plus this one right here. And they're all nailed at an angle, but I think we got it. A million nails. There we go. See, this is what I mean. There's one, two, three studs, so I'm perfectly fine taking this piece out. It's not going anywhere. <laughs> And that completes all our framing to put this vanity in the bathroom. Because remember, we had to get this vanity pushed back so it wasn't sticking out past the doorway. And now we can push the countertop back into this wall because we removed all the plumbing, we lowered it, and we removed all the electrical and the framing that was in our way. Countertop's gonna slide right back here and the vanity's gonna slide back a little closer also. And make sure you stay tuned to see how we cut three inches off the back of our brand new vanity to get it into this wall. And since we're out here on the island of Kauai, we can't just go down the street and get a brand new one if we screw it up. So I think the next thing I wanna do is start to drywall right here, make it look better. We're gonna put a piece right here in the back. We'll glue it to this piece, paper to paper, put some pieces around the side to hold it in place. And then I really need to get this piece up next to the back of board because we need to tile this wall of the shower first and we're gonna tell you why in just a minute, but I would love to start hanging some drywall and getting this place looking like a bathroom. Y'all ready to cut some drywall? Yeah. Yeah. All right, first piece of drywall. Let's go. Nice. Nice cut. Yup. All right, I'll cut these for around, around the perimeter. That's gonna help hold it in place, in place, while the glue dries. I have coming up. All right, we're putting the piece of drywall over the vanity where the light is. I don't have a drywall, a dry, drywall router here. So here's what we did. Check it out. We put some white paint on the face of the box. I'm going to position the sheet where it goes, press against the box. The paint should transfer. And then we can cut it out with something. That'll work. This is all I got, just a blade. 
I'm gonna treat it like a drywall saw. Maybe this is what they call a Kauaian drywall blade, Jordan, I don't know. If I can just get it through here, I'll be good to go. But I'm glad we don't have a lot of these. There we go. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> well, there's a will, there's a way, huh? My first one in Hawaii. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Woo. Pretty good fit. Nice. All right, gang, the drywall is basically done. I got a piece at the bottom, some patches on the other side of the kitchen, but we got what we needed so I can start tiling because we got to return that saw in a couple of days and we have a million videos on tiling showers. So we're going to fly on this one because we want to go enjoy the beach and the surf. On this back wall, we're gonna run them horizontal, put our little shelf, and our goal tonight is to get this back wall done, and then we're gonna do the side walls and start on this floor tomorrow. Let's get going, guys. Let's do it. I'm gonna do this, and you guys are gonna be my cut guys, water guys, all that. Yep. All right, here we go. I'm excited. It's gonna look awesome. All right, team, it is the next morning, and check it out. This is how much tile we were able to put up last night. It's coming out awesome, and we're gonna walk you through the pattern and why we chose to do what we did a little later. I'm gonna put Jordan and Rad on tiling so they can work together in there. And while they're doing that, I'm gonna hit this drywall because we gotta start thinking about paint. I gotta drywall all the seams, inside corners, and uh, make this thing look great. And I also have a couple patches to do in the kitchen where you can see the refrigerator right down here. So what do we do for drywall tools? Ran to the local Home Depot, just bought a cheap plastic mud pan, spent a little, extra dollars on a stainless steel knife. Well worth the investment, that'll last forever. We got the smallest bucket of all-purpose mud we could find and the biggest roll of tape they had. This thing will reach from here all the way to the beach. Also picked up a piece of corner bead. This is mud on bead. Got that at the local hardware store. Uh, didn't want to use metal because it's going to rust here, but I like the mud on bead for something like this. It's going to work great. So it looks like we have a full day's work ahead of us. So I say it's time to get back to work. great progress this wall is done this one's almost done we just have about four full tile to put up here at the ceiling so we want to tackle that one next and get this wall all done and the very first one we're going to tackle is the one around the beam so we have to slope the top and notch it for the beam so obviously we need to know what that angle is and as you can tell we've already figured it out because we've done these two how do we do that we just put our phone in level mode put it on the ceiling and we're 23 degrees. Now, let's show you how we transfer that measurement to our tile using a simple speed square, because it's all we got. Here's the piece of tile we're gonna notch around that beam. So we've got the length already right here. That's our height of our tile. And we're gonna use a speed square. Here's the pivot point right here. In fact, it says pivot on there. And you'll notice on the hypotenuse, it goes from zero to 90 degrees. So I'm just gonna start angling it at my pivot point until 23 degrees lines up at this edge, which is flush with the edge of the tile. There's 20 and 23 right there. Now you can come over here and see, we've already made the line perfect right there. That's our cut line. So we can use that method to do any angle we want with just your smartphone and a plastic speed square. All right, now let's bring it out to the saw, make that cut, and then we can mark it for the notch for our beam. Holding this in place against my spacers. I'm just gonna make a line of here. And I'm just gonna eyeball it, man. Yep. All right, I like that. Now let's take it down. We'll get our depth. We'll draw everything, including the bull nose right here, and take that whole piece out with the saw and the grinder and whatever else we can find. All right, we're just using this whole saw as a circle guide to account for our bull nose. Looks pretty good. Yeah, I like that. Let's hog that out. Boom. This is a piece of tile. We're not hogging. We're cutting gracefully. <laughs> Removing. So 
as you see, I made one cut here and another cut here. That allowed me to remove all this tile between our radius. And I'm going to use this little guy, sneak up on the radius and get this part out of there. And we'll clean all this up and give her a test fit. Don't worry about the ink, it comes right off. Oh yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah. yeah. Jordan and Rad are doing the last fall in the shower. So I thought, what the heck, we can get one more body in here. Two and three eighths. <laughs> so I'm gonna finish mudding this yeah. because my daughter's after me because she wants to paint, right? <laughs> Perfect. All right, all the wall tiles are done. They look fantastic. Can't wait to see it with grout in it. The white grout is gonna make it pop even more. But big whoop, right? It's wall tile, super easy. But what we don't see a lot of is integrated shower floor tiles. And what do I mean by integrated? Where the tile in the shower just flows naturally right out into the floor tile of the main bathroom. And we have a break right here. This tile is sloped to the drain. This guy sloped a little bit back to account for the high spot here and then all that perfectly flat. And we see this all the time in high dollar custom homes, right Jordan? But we don't see it kind of everywhere else because there are a lot of tips and tricks, a lot of details you gotta get absolutely right. But we love the way the shower floor flows into the main bathroom. It looks killer and we're gonna show you how to DIY it yourself. Now we're on the island of Kauai. We ordered everything, what, like two months ago, Jordan, right? All the tile, the Schluter system, the valve, the toilet, it was all put at the Home Depot, we picked it up and that's what we had to work with. Now those Schluter pans are preformed at the factory to slope towards the drain so you get good drainage from your shower. And we love them because it saves us a huge step in the dry pack and the waterproofing. It already comes waterproof. We just have to set the drain and we're ready to go. So once we were ready to start laying floor tile, I did my layout. I started my layout by using a blank marker and making a big X on the pan with the intersection at the drain. And these lines of the X and those black marker lines on our orange curdy on that pan are where the valleys are in the pan. The valleys separate it into four quadrants and each one is flat. They're not rounded like a typical funnel that you would think of. So once I had those black lines, it was just an easy matter of setting my floor tile on there, using a level on top, connecting the line, and then I had my cut. I started right here in this quadrant. I did all eight pieces, pre-cut them, fit them, made sure it was perfect. Then we got our thin set out, brought the thin set right up to our line and laid that quadrant. Now, if you're using mosaic tile, you may not have to do an envelope cut because they're gonna form to the shape of the pan. But because we're using this big tile that we used in the floor, check out what would happen if we just laid it in place. I'm gonna set it on the pan, but look, it's sitting here and here and it's rocking pretty good. You're gonna have a lot of lippage if you don't make this envelope cut, and you could probably break that tile because it's not gonna be very well supported right here in the middle. And I can just imagine you're gonna have little puddles of water everywhere because the whole time you're gonna fight that lippage. You have to make an envelope cut when you use a large tile on a pan like this. Tiling is full of compromise, and the main compromise we had to make on the tile floor was that we don't have unity between this piece and this piece. In other words, the wood grain in here doesn't flow into this tile. We could do it that way, but what you're gonna get is small triangles. No matter how you lay this out, if I were to put this here and cut this off, then this little triangle piece of tile ends up over here. And it's really difficult to get that little tile perfectly flush with the rest because it's so small. So what we did on this one, we tried to use full tiles as much as possible, and we didn't worry about the wood grain. And you know what? It still looks pretty dang awesome. It's a good time to pivot back to that vanity. Remember, it was sticking out past this door by about four inches, and we have to sneak it back into that wall. Now, Jordan's gonna show you some of the work we've already done. You can see the niche we built, and that niche is gonna allow the countertop to go back into the wall so the faucet can be behind the vessel sink. And now that all that framing is done and the niche is built, we still have two major challenges ahead of us to get this vanity into that wall space. This thing is about four inches too deep. 
So we're actually going to cut the back off. But we got drawer glides down here. We got the drain and the plumbing to uh, accommodate. We got the doors up here. So we're not sure how we're going to do that yet. Make sure you stay tuned and we're going to figure that out together. But what we can do right now is to cut the vanity top. I'm going to put it up here for you so you can see. This is the front of it. This is the drain for the vessel sink. And this hole is for the faucet. So if I cut on this black line, I can push this back just a little bit more and the faucet won't interfere with that back wall and neither will the handle. So we're gonna take advantage of our saw while we still got it for a few more minutes. Put literally. This, yeah, literally. We're gonna put this on here and cut that. Let's grab some help because this takes two men and get this thing cut and return that tile saw, which has been awesome, I'll say. Nice, that wasn't too bad at all. Maybe we can uh, maybe we can use that like a mini backsplash, what do you think? All right, let's put this inside where it's safe, get this saw cleaned up, return to the store, and then we're gonna figure out how we're gonna modify that vanity. Think of it like trying to put 20 pounds of whatever into a 10 pound sack, that's what we gotta do. Now let's give this thing a test fit. We were really anxious about how we're gonna get this vanity in here. So it sits on the ledge like that all the way back. You can see I got some more demo to do. I got a drywall screw right in the way. But that's where <laughs> our faucet is. So I'm gonna have to drill a hole there. I'm actually gonna put a big notch there. And then I'm also gonna have to notch, come on down here, Jordan, in the backer board, because the faucet's gonna be in that wall and the hoses are gonna come out and tie in here and here. But we got it back as far as we could. And I'd say we're sticking out past this stop. What, an inch? Yeah, that's the best we can do, huh? Absolutely, but I'm happy with that. It was way out here. So all that work for three inches. Let me get rid of this. So Jordan's gonna start putting in a white grout in the shower. How do you feel about uh, grouting a shower on an island in the middle of the Pacific Ocean? It's about 10 feet tall, you ready? So while he's doing that, I'm gonna put another coat of uh, mud on all my uh, joints. And then down here, we had tile baseboard. And you can see there's still some thin set here. And our new baseboard is a PVC base because that's what we like to use in your shower so it won't ever rot but it's not tall enough to cover that thin set. So I'm actually gonna flat tape that so the paint looks great, just like I flat taped right here between the drywall and the uh, metal trim. All right, gang, we're grouting this bathroom. The grouting is so hard because the grout doesn't wait for anybody. The grout doesn't care how fast you are, it doesn't care how slow you are, it doesn't matter if it's your first shower or your hundredth shower, it doesn't matter if you're in Texas or Kauai, it's just, the best way to grout is to just chug an, chug an energy drink or some coffee and just get an energy power up and go as fast as you can. And I'll, you see I'm using the two hand method. So I usually spread it and then I come across at 45s like that. And the thing about this grout, even though it's pre-mixed and it's super fun to work with, like I said, it just doesn't wait for you. So I can already tell by the way that it's spreading that it's time to, it's time to wipe. Okay, right here, got the, got the sponges all, all set up. And so you start with the sponge where you started. I like to get all the big fin set off the tile in the middle first because I found that if you try and wipe your joints too soon, it doesn't matter what kind of sponge you're using, you're gonna end up digging out your grout. So I always just get the bulk off the middle of the tiles first, like you see me doing now. And then I go around and and hit my joints, just even that, even that minute of letting that grout sit there in the joints makes a difference. You said uh, grouting is a game of minutes? Yep, golf is a game of millimeters, grouting is a game of minutes. Nice, bud. Yep. I'm gonna go get you some clean water. To drink or to use? No, to use. You can, get, you can get a drink later. We gotta get this grout on. All right, gang, all the grouting is done and the tile came out phenomenal. We love the white on the walls and the wood grain tile on the floor. And it's the same tile, obviously, from out here into the shower. Makes it look epic. A couple details we did. We ran the tile all the way up here, almost 10 feet on this tall wall. Followed the angle of the roof here on this wall and we even wrapped that beam. Love the way that looks. 
And there are a lot of important details that we have to do to finish in this bathroom. And if we don't do them right, it's gonna make like all the work we did for naught. We have fixtures to put up, the electrical, the plumbing, the toilet, and the most important probably is this vanity. Remember, I gotta cut the back out of it. I have a table saw, a recip saw, and a multi-tool. We have to remove like four inches from the back of this and stick it in that wall so it doesn't stick out in the doorway and give somebody an injury on their hip. So make sure you stay tuned for that next video where we do a magic trick on this vanity. Give a big old envelope cut to your like button, smash it, ask a question, drop a comment. Please subscribe, check studpack.com for merch, and we'll see you on the very next Studpack video right here from Kauai.